a bed behind you? Yes. Okay. And then as he points over my shoulder, he grabs me and turns me to him. And that was a shock. And I try to push him away. And uh, I only weighed probably 120 pounds at that time. He was a very large man. And I kept telling him, no, this is, I, I don't want this at all. I, you, you, and I'm sure I must have said, you must have had the wrong idea. And he wouldn't listen. You know, there was no way that he would listen to what I was saying. And he grabbed me again very forcefully and started biting on my top lip. And this, is, this was extremely painful. I thought he was going to bite my lip off. It was, uh, and that's when he pushed me back onto the bed. He bit the top of your lip. Yes. Pushed you onto the bed. Right. And then what happened? And then this, so it's been so long and it's just so hard to go into. I need to stop. You know why? What's, why is it still so painful? What's going through your mind right now? That I'm afraid of him. You're still afraid of him? Yes. But I'm still afraid, especially if she becomes president. And I know it's looking that way. So it's frightening, Erin. It's frightening. He, he throws you onto the bed. Right. And then what did you and do And I was you? completely dressed. I had on a skirt and a blouse. and. He tore the, the waist of my skirt, and then he ripped my pantyhose, and he raped me. It was very vicious. I was just pinned down, and it was a very helpless situation. I did not know what to do. I was so frightened. I was only 35 at the time, and... Um, it was, it was horrible. I just wanted it to be over with. So he would go away, you know, so he would he just... He got up? No, he, he, he held me down you. for a long time. And then he did it again. I was so ready for him to leave me alone. When he started raping me again, and uh, it was very brief, and he did get up, and he straightened himself, and my mouth was bleeding, and it was hurting. And he just straightens himself and goes to the door. With you still on the bed? Yes, and you're crying. Not... He straightens himself, and he goes to the door and puts on his sunglasses and tells me to get some ice on my lip and goes out the door. About how long did everything last? Probably all of it. From the time he walked in the door until the time he left, not more than 25 or 30 minutes. So when he was still on top of you, after he did it the first time, you thought it was over? Yes. And did he say anything to you? Or he oh, just did it again? He did say something, but it's just too horrible. I don't want to repeat it. But then he started again. And that was brief. And then is when he got up. Did you feel trapped? This big man on top of you? Oh, my goodness, yes. He would push down on my left clavicle, and it hurt so much. I thought my clavicle was going to break. And my lip was just ballooning out four times the size that it should have been. While he was raping you? Yes. Was the lip bleeding? Yes. When he first came up to your room and he grabbed you after you were looking out the window, what went through your mind? Did you? I thought that I could tell him no and he would go away. You know, I thought, uh-oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And I could say, no, this, I, I don't want this at all. And he would leave. 
and it seemed to make it worse. It seemed to make it worse. When I said no. Did you blame yourself at first? Oh, yes. For letting him up to your room? Yes, very much. That was the mentality of the 70s. You allow a man to come to your room, and it's your fault. You know, whatever happens, that's something you just have to lump. So in other words, on top of being raped, you went home blaming yourself. Yes. For, for Bill Clinton's rape. Yes. You blamed yourself. Yes. And they come in early from the kitchen area. And uh, just before they do... They uh, would be Bill and Hillary. Bill and Hillary Clinton. And just before they do, a gentleman who had driven them from the airport comes straight over to me. He was a very... He, he was supporting Clinton, but he didn't know what had happened to me, even though he was a friend. And he said, the topic of the conversation all the way from the airport was about you. And that startled me. And I knew I had to get out of there. Well, just as he moved, here comes Hillary straight for me. And start, she gets to me and she starts saying, I just want to thank you for everything you're doing in Bill's campaign and it's so nice to meet you and all of these things. So I just nodded and told my friend, let's go. And I thought somebody from behind had grabbed a hold of my arm, but it was her. She grabbed a hold of my arm and my hand and she pulls me into her and she says with this very angry look on her face, which had been so pleasant seconds before, and in a low voice says, do you understand everything you do. And that frightened me. Do you think at that point she knew that Bill Clinton raped you? Or do you just think that she knew something happened? I, what do you think she knew? I, at that moment, people have asked me that, said, well, do you think she knew what happened? At that moment, and I have to go by what I felt then, and the look that she gave me, I felt like she knew. And that she he was, raped you. Yes, and that she was telling me to keep quiet. Keep quiet about her husband's rape. Yeah. It's okay. I know. You did the right thing. It's not your fault, okay? I know. It's not your fault. It's not your fault. I know. You know that? Oh, you I know it. I know it now. It's just wrong. so hard to go over it again. I know. You didn't do anything wrong, okay? Yeah. You didn't, okay? Yeah. I love you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.